what emotionally was being held in his body that caused the cancer or energetically or whatever I didn't really get into that I mean I'll be honest with you I didn't get into that because he was so tight and shut down that it, you know if he'd let me know that or if that was there he, he would have been, been open to healing period he would have said please heal me his spirit would have said please heal me and it would have laid out everything for me to see and it didn't do that what it did was basically I knew right away that there was cancer everywhere and it was like a it was almost like you know when a volcano erupts and it forms a the hot lava goes down but eventually it forms a shield of uh, where it's cooled off a little yeah his crust. cancer was like that over one side of his body it was like a crust and all I got to do was penetrate that crust and make some fissures in it some cracks that allow a little bit of relief and that's all it did that's all I really got but like if he had let me into his space and said I want to be healed and he was open to it he those things would have been important but even the cause of disease at this point it's just not that important you're just trying to heal the person and regardless of the cause what you can do is if they had cancer I mean bottom line cancer no matter who it is is anger and resentment in their life it could be a silent anger you've never even seen like the person never displays a temper well they've been eating that anger you know or that person resentful toward life and how life turned out for them and that once again can be silent you know people suffer in silence because they have a little bit of a martyr syndrome going on where they don't share their feelings with other people that resentment and anger that's cancer the other part of his cancer is lung cancer and the lungs I know because I have asthma lung is all about fear of life or refusal to accept life as it is and that's really your lung when you can't breathe you don't even want to breathe in the air you're fearful and that's what that is so with lung cancer of course smoking accelerates it and when you chain smoke you're really that's toxic it's you're poisoning your body so there's a little bit of self-loathing going on with smoking, whether people want to realize it or not, whether they want to admit it or not. Most of them will admit it. If you know the most smokers who really smoke, the ones I've known, there is a little self-loathing or a little bit of part of them that says, well, this life sucks anyway, and my life sucks, and who cares? I'm smoking. I'm going to die anyway. Well, that's kind of a self-defeating, self-loathing attitude. And part of that's denial of life, denial of, of the soul and spirit. You know, there's no striving toward excellence or striving toward something else. People already think, this life sucks. Uh, I'm smoking because it makes me feel good. I know I'm going to die. Blah, blah, blah. But there's a lot of self-loathing going on with smoking and with somebody who's like an alcoholic. You know, when you're doing things you know that will destroy your body, I don't really buy anybody going, oh, I'm just, you know, I don't, you know, I don't think of it as killing me. Well, everybody knows it's killing me. So they're making a conscious decision to kill themselves. So you have to deal with that too. But you know, that's their soul's predetermined. That's their reason for, you know, what, whatever. That's their reason for being here. Maybe it's to learn that lesson. Something else, when you die, when your body dies, your soul has chosen you to die. So there's a reason for death. There's a reason you've gotten everything you can get out of this life. You've either learned all the lessons you can in this lifetime or you haven't. And it's time to move on to the next lifetime and work on those if you're working on the same issues over and over again they come back to you bigger in the next lifetime so you know it's good if you really get your plate clean and really find out what your issues are here on life my issue one of my big issues is fear so that's what I'm looking at fear of life and trying to get over it so you know hopefully I work this out in this lifetime so next time I don't have to come back with that I come back with maybe fear of Brian or <laughs> something else. No, you you traditionally, I think it's like a spiral. You have to work on issues and you have to get through, but once you get through one issue, you might have something else to look at. We all have these issues. We all have these underlying things. And when your body chooses to die, it's usually because there's nothing else for you on this earth to live, to learn. There might be lessons for other people to learn from your death. There might be lessons for other people to learn from your life. 
and just watching back and looking at how you touch people's lives 